What if you could invest in great dividend stocks before anybody else? I believe you can, I believe that you should, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to find these stocks, and I'll even share one from my own portfolio that has never paid a dividend, but I believe it will in about 10 years. Hi, my name is John Quast. Thank you so much for coming to my YouTube channel, Working Capital. I'm here to help anybody willing to put in the hard work to take financial action. Let's get into it. So I wanna just say upfront that I have about 30 years until I reach retirement age. And that means that my needs are likely to be different from somebody who has far less time until retirement. So for someone like me who has plenty of time, I'm focused on beating the market average, or at least doing as good as average. And the thing is the so-called best dividend stocks often underperform the market average over a long period of time. So take a company like Johnson & Johnson, for example, the very big, well-known medical company. They make Band-Aid, they make Tylenol, all sorts of stuff that you know. It pays a high yield dividend of about 2.75% as of this recording. And it's also what is known as a dividend king. It's one of the best dividend stocks out there. It has paid and raised its dividend every year for 60 consecutive years. So it might be a very good stock for somebody who is already in retirement, but for somebody who is trying to still grow the value of their portfolio over time, maybe not the best. Over the past 10 years, if you have bought Johnson & Johnson stock and reinvested those dividends all along the way in what's called the dividend snowball method, you would be up about 187%. Now that's a good return, but it was actually below average. If you had just invested into an S&P 500 index fund that also has dividends and reinvested those, you'd be up over 220%. The point here that I'm making is that the best dividend stock today might not be the best stock to invest in if you're trying to grow over a long period of time, and it might not be the best dividend stock of tomorrow. Define tomorrow's best paying dividend stocks. I believe there are four things that investors should focus on. First, you need to look for market beating opportunities, companies that can grow their businesses and improve profitability over time. Now, it's not just any company that can grow. Boston Consulting Group, BCG, actually did a very comprehensive study that looked at stocks that beat the market over long time periods, and it looked at the stock that grew and were among the best performers, but then it also looked at stocks that grew but were not among the best performers, and it found a few things. For example, it found that companies sometimes grow by issuing debt, sometimes they acquire other companies and that doesn't go well, sometimes they grow but at the expense of their profit margins, and sometimes they enter more risky businesses which investors don't like as much and then therefore their valuations come down and the stock falls. So it's not just any growth that works, it needs to be the right kind of growth. But that's what we're looking for. We're looking for market beating opportunities, companies that can grow, improve their margins, improve their cash flows, all those sorts of things over a long period of time. The second point kind of goes with the first point, and it's a little bit harder to quantify, but we're looking for competent management teams. So the management teams that are going to stay out of business propositions that are going to destroy their profit margins, for example, or management teams that are going to acquire other companies that aren't actually going to contribute to improving the overall business. Like like I said, this can be harder to quantify, but we are looking for a management team that can keep the business on track, both operationally and financially. Third, we're looking for a profitable business. So dividends are paid out of the surplus of what the business produces, the profits. If a business doesn't have any profits, then it is not going to be able to pay out a dividend to its shareholders in a sustainable way. It doesn't necessarily have to be a great profit right now, but there does have to be a path to that robust profitability. Finally, we are looking for businesses that are going to have limited capital requirements once they exit the growth phase of their business. Some businesses are always going to have very high costs to maintain the business that they have. Take for example a software business. There's always going to be a need for a lot of research and development spend, for example, in a software business because if you stop spending and you stop improving the product, then a competitor is going to come in there and take what business that you have. By contrast, other businesses, once they have built it, it is very, very sticky. It has a very wide moat and there are going to be limited capital requirements beyond a certain point. And because there's going to be limited capital requirements after they exit the growth phase, that's going to leave more money for it to distribute to its shareholders via a dividend. 
So is there a company out there meeting those four criteria? In fact, I believe that there is, and it's why it is one of the biggest positions in my own retirement portfolio. It's never paid a dividend, but I believe it will in about 10 years, and that company is Floor & Decor Holdings, FND. Here's what I like about it. The company was founded in the year 2000, so relatively recently, and it's a lot like a Home Depot or a Lowe's, except it specializes in flooring, like tile and laminate flooring. What sets Floor & Decor apart from a lot of other companies is that a lot of flooring specialists are small. By contrast, Floor & Decor averages about 78,000 square feet, which isn't quite as big as a Home Depot or a Lowe's, but it is still very big. The advantage of that is that it has more flooring options in stock than any of the competition, including Home Depot and Lowe's. When a homeowner wants to do a flooring project, they want to see the flooring before they commit to buying. It's a very big purchase. The place that is going to have the most options out for consumers to see is Floor & Decor, and that is one of the things that gives it an advantage. It is also a very good company when it comes to developing relationships with professionals, people who install flooring for a living. I would say that Floor & Decor has been very successful in growing its popularity over the past 20 years. So if you look at the same store sales, same store sales have gone up for the company for 14 consecutive years. It doesn't just happen. It only happens when management is doing the right things to grow its awareness of the brand in the market. And it has to be something that the pros and the consumers actually like. And apparently they do. Okay, so is this a market beating growth opportunity? I believe that it is. As of right now, Floor & Decor has 178 locations. However, in the next eight to 10 years, management believes that they can have 500 locations. That's not quite as big as Home Depot or Lowe's, which are closer to 2,000 locations. So 500 seems like a very realistic number to shoot for, in my opinion. What's really great about these stores is they have a payback period of about three years. So any money that management uses to build these new locations, it gets back within three years time. And moreover, stores are already profitable. The whole company is already very profitable. Now, if you look at its profit margin, it's not as good as something like a Home Depot. Home Depot is like the gold standard in this space. Home Depot's net profit margin is around 11% as of this recording. Floor & Decor is closer to 7%. But I believe that Floor & Decor can get more profitable and approach Home Depot's profitability in time. And here's why. Its gross profit margin, so revenue minus cost of goods, is 40%. By comparison, Home Depot's is closer to 34%. So Floor & Decor has that advantage already, and I believe that its net profit margin will only grow in time as its stores generate more sales volume. So when you look at how many stores management plans to open, when you consider that the same store sales could keep going up, this is a company that could easily triple its revenue over the next 10 years. And if its profit margin increases as well, it could be generating over a billion dollars of net profit every single year. So this is a stock that I believe could go up two and a half, three times in value conservatively. But remember that part that I said about a company not needing a whole lot of capital to maintain their business after they have it built? I believe that that applies to Floor & Decor. Yes, it's always gonna have expenses, but the bulk of the expenses are getting up and going in these new markets. After Floor & Decor has established that 500 location physical store presence, that is a very big form of a moat that is going to be very hard to compete against to any new players coming in the market. Moreover, Home Depot and Lowe's don't really want this because they would have to dedicate too much floor space to flooring to compete with floor and decor. In other words, it's going to carve out a niche and that niche isn't going to require a whole lot of capital to maintain. That means that floor and decor will generate a lot of profits, a lot of cash flow for its shareholders. But after it gets to 500 locations, I don't really see a whole lot of available options for that cash. It's a very niche opportunity and it might not be able to expand beyond that niche to put that capital to use to grow the business more, which means it's very likely that it'll start returning the capital to shareholders via a dividend. 10 years from now, the dividend might start off at 1% or 2%, which won't be that great. But if you buy Floor & Decor stock now, ride it for the market beating growth, then perhaps you are locking in a 6% return or a 7% return on your cost basis, which if you're holding this stock for a retirement portfolio is going to give you superior income by that time. All this put together is why I'm so excited about Floor & Decor, the company, why I own the stock in my retirement portfolio, even though it doesn't pay a dividend 
today. I believe it's going to be one of the best dividend paying stocks of the future, so I want to buy it now. Okay, so perhaps you are still not convinced that you should be looking for tomorrow's dividend payers instead of today's dividend payers. If you are still on the fence about that, want to hear more, you can go ahead and click this video right here in the corner. I go into more detail on the whole premise behind this way of thinking. Beyond that, I hope that you enjoyed the video and I hope that it was helpful to you. If it was helpful to you, I would ask that you help me in return. Go ahead and hit the like. Comment, what do you think is going to be one of the top dividend paying stocks of the future? Also, if you'd like to hear more, go ahead and consider subscribing to the channel. Other than that, we'll see you in the next video.